Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video we're going to be discussing the concepts of mass spectrometry, a tool with great relevance in chemistry in general but also in um, forensic science. Okay, so give you a bit of an overview of what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to start by looking at the structure of a mass spectrometer, how you know what are all the, the different <coughs> parts of the instrument and how they work. We're going to look at the process of how the mass spectrometer actually um, functions and can analyze substances. We'll look at um, how the, the fundamental principle involved in a mass spectrometer or an MS um, of separation by deflection. And then we'll also look at, a, okay, once you produce a mass spectrum at the other end, how do we make sense of it? Okay, so let's start by having a look at this diagram here of how a mass spectrometer is put together. Okay, so we have over on the left hand side of the image here, we have where the vaporized sample enters. Okay, so typically um, mass spec um, is, is connected to a separation technique like um, gas chromatography or um, high performance liquid chromatography, HPLC. Okay, um, but it doesn't have to be. Um, so, you know, the, you can directly analyze a sample as long as it um, forms a vapor. So we, the vaporized sample enters over here. We have the ionization and acceleration kind of stages, so we'll talk about that in a little more in a second. We have the presence of the electromagnet, which creates a magnetic field where deflection occurs, and then we have detection down at the other end. Okay, and then we, we're then processing the signal. Okay, so this is the general sort of structure. Now, if you were looking at a diagram like this, you might get the impression that it's a quite a small sort of thing, but actually a, a mass spec that involves this kind of structure can, you know, is, is as big as like a chest freezer um, or, or even bigger. Okay, it's quite a large um, instrument in order to construct the magnetic field just the way you need it. Um, forensic scientists get around that with a, a different kind of technique. I'll tell you a little bit more about later. Okay, but so looking at the process of how the mass spectrometer functions. Okay, so it started off with a heated filament lamp. So, a, you know, a, a filament that is heated up and then there's a source of electrons. The idea is that these electrons then collide with the vaporized sample as it passes in. So this does two things. The first one is that it causes the sample to become ionized, to become a positively charged ion by knocking electrons off it. And also the force of the collision, where the, because the electrons are kind of coming in at, at right angles, so that the sample is kind of going one way and then the electrons are going another way. So then you're colliding and knocking electrons off. Um, it also causes the molecules to fragment. Okay, and so the fragmentation is something that's um, highly useful in forensics um, or in the detection of these substances. Okay, so they're positively charged and broke, typically broken into fragments. Okay, that these positive ions are accelerator accelerated by an electric field so that they're going to then move into the, um, heading towards the detector. Okay, but so then once they've been accelerated in towards the detector, they enter a magnetic field, which is where the actual separation happens um, by the process of deflection. So based on a ratio of their mass to their electric charge, um, that then they become deflected um, by the magnetic field. Okay, so the idea is that by by varying the accelerating voltage and by varying the magnetic the strength of the magnetic field, that we can select for particular ions to pass into um, through the magnetic field and hit the detector while excluding others. And then by varying that, that we can select for different sized chunks, and then we can um, pick up the signal from there. So the signal that of, of what hits at the other end with the detector is then amplified. So you know, so, so that we can um, we can detect very trace amounts um, in 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 a way that's easy to identify. And then what it produces what's called a mass spectrum. So where we've actually looked at the detection, looked at the signal from a whole sequence of different masses um, in in kind of in order. And so what it does is that then that gives us useful information about the molecular weight of the whole molecule, the, the unfragmented molecule, the actual the fragments that it breaks up into, and also the relative abundance or relative amounts of each, okay, by the, the size of the peaks on the mass spectrum. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the concept of deflection. Okay, so we identified that the magnetic field is where the separation kind of really happens. Okay, because you've broken it up into different sections, but we now need to be able to work out what those sections are and how much there is. So we have our sample, so you can see it entering over on the left. Okay, and then it passes, it's accelerated towards the magnetic field, which is curved. Okay, so it follows a curved path. And what happens is that that curve, the spe specific kind of strength of the mag magnetic field, means that only ions with a very particular amount, uh, a mass to charge ratio, 
will follow the curved path accurately all the way through to the detector. Okay, that if the, the mass to charge ratio is too large, that we get too little deflection. So that's where we're looking at this purple line over here. Too little deflection, so they make they they collide with this side of the detector. You can see that curved path not big, not curved enough. Okay, so they don't hit the detector. Likewise, if we have a smaller mass to charge ratio, there's too much deflection. It's bent too much um, by the magnetic field and it collides with the wall on the opposite side instead. Whereas those with just the right mass to charge ratio are the, the blue line passing right through to the detector. And then we tweak the magnetic field ever so slightly and to look for an, a different mass. Okay, so that we're not always picking up the same mass, that we're, we're isolating specific masses and then measuring um, the amount of signal that they create. Okay. So this specific mass to charge ratio, which is our m slash z on that uh, that you can see there, is what passes through the um, the magnetic field. Okay, so this is the mass spectrum that gets produced. So this is kind of showing you the the peaks of particular molecular weight fragments or particular mass to charge ratio fragments. Most of the time that the char the fragments take on a single positive charge, um, but we have to also be careful that they can um, take on a the same mass can have a two positive charge. It can be not have two electrons knocked off it, and so it registers at a slightly different um, level. You know, if we, if we had um, 72, you know, but then it, it hasn't knocked off it, so it would be registering at 36. But as you can see in this case, that we don't have every possible peak. Um, that there's there tends to be certain ones that appear. So the idea is that we identify certain key peaks for a particular substance. Okay, and the idea is that then that helps us to identify the substance, but also it helps us to know, all right, well, how is that breaking up? How is it fragmenting? Okay, so the ones that are here with the numbers are the, are the, the most important fragments in this particular molecule, which is pentane. Okay, so you can see the structure up the top. Okay, so <clears throat> what we can see is that the largest fragment, and here we're looking at 72, corresponds to the whole molecule. It's unfragmented. Okay. And so um, that's you know typically the largest one you're going to pick up if it's a pure sample. But then we can see the other kind of main fragments correspond to different breaks and different points in the chain. So if one kind of carbon group breaks off, then we end up with a 57 um, fragment. If two carbons break off, then we end up with a 43 fragment. And what you can see is that there, because there's more than one way that that can break off, um, from either end that you tend to get quite a strong peak there. It kind of breaks in the middle quite effectively. Okay, and so that you get a couple of other similar ones depending on if there's other hydrogens that are knocked off and stuff. Okay, and then 29 is where we've got two carbon groups. Okay, so um, what we would be able to do is not only but look at this and to be able to say, all right, well, this is how it breaks up, but also the way this is forensically useful is that we create a database of pure compounds that we've analyzed this way. We compare the fragmentation patterns or the, the, the mass spectrum um, from our question substance with the database and then the, the actual the database does the matching and it says, okay, well, this substance has key peaks here, here and here, so there's an X percent chance that it is cocaine or X percent chance that it's methamphetamine or whatever substance, okay? And so by com comparison there, then that allows us to detect the substances that we are um, we are trying to find. Okay, so we've looked at the, the technique of how the mass spectrometer works, how it's put together, how it's able to separate um, different kind of fragments of the molecule, and then how we can have a go at interpreting a mass spectrum. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.